Welcome back everybody. Hopefully a fun video here at Blue Glow Electronics today. A question I get a lot is how can AC and DC um, voltages exist on the same wire at the same point in time? And this, this topic comes up a lot when it's dealing with uh, tube amp power supplies because you may have 400 volts at a point on a wire and at the same time on that wire you may have 6 volts or 5 volts of AC to feed the, uh, the heater voltage and so I thought I'd just make a short little video today. If you notice I've got a breadboard set up down here. The top two rows are um, one of them is ground and the other is um, positive and then what I've got hooked to it is both this fluke voltmeter as well as up here you can see the Tektronix oscilloscope and the line right here is set at zero volts right now. One thing to note, I've got this scope set on DC coupling right now. And I just wanted to show you something here. If I come over here and I hook this wire here and this wire here, if you'll notice I'm getting nine point, uh, if I held these on there well, getting 9.1 volts down here on the, uh, the fluke meter. And if you'll notice, this little line moved up to right here. And if you look at the gradients, it's set at 5 volts. Let me zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it better. Um, there we go. So it's set on 5 volts per division. A division is from here to here, so that's 5 volts. And then almost another one, so that would be 10 volts. And it's one notch down from that on the little gradient scale here. So it's 9 volts. Um, if I disconnect this, if you notice the line goes right back down um, to the zero voltage as well as, you'll notice, the meter goes back down. So um, what I'm showing is that DC can exist on a line, and I'm kind of showing you how that shows up on your, uh, your meter here at, at, or the scope at any point in time. Okay, if you got the DC part down now, let's talk a little bit about AC. So if you'll notice up here, um, I'm feeding a roughly a one kilohertz tone um, out of this function generator down via these wires right here um, into those same two uh, strips, the, the positive and the negative strips there. And if you'll notice up here then feeding into the oscilloscope, you can see here we now have roughly 10 volts. It'll tell you 5 volts scale roughly and this is a peak to peak meter reading function of this uh, oscilloscope it's telling me I roughly have 10 volts on peak to peak here on those two wires okay okay at this point I'm going to apply some DC voltage to those same lines and I want you to watch what happens did you notice what just happened right there I applied 5 volts DC to that line so the one thing you noticed happened the AC signal shifted away from its original reference point which was zero volts here in the middle. Now your AC voltage here, your alternating voltage, is alternating around a new point, its reference point, of five volts. Um, so in other words now it's actually going up um, from five volts here, another five volts to ten volts, and then back down to zero. Whereas before it was sitting at zero going to five volts and then down to minus five volts. Um, it was referenced around zero. Now we're referenced around five volts. If I kept cranking this thing up, check this out. Now we're referenced around 10 volts. So I'm going from 10 volts up to 15, down to five. I have a new reference point here in the middle. Another way of saying this would be that I have a 10 volt peak to peak AC signal that has in this case a 10 volt DC offset. It's very important and you'll hear those words used a lot um, when it comes to biasing um, solid state amplifiers because you're wanting to make sure that the signal, the audio signal leaving your speakers um, doesn't have any DC element to it. In other words, you would do a DC offset bias to get rid of that DC element and get that thing, um, you know, referenced back to zero volts. So you typically use a DC voltmeter across the speaker outputs and you 
to what they call DC offset bias so that with, with no signal applied you have zero volts on the output of your speakers. Um, just an example of how this gets used. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you here. And it's in a function of an oscilloscope. So let's, uh, let's add some DC voltage to this thing. And by the way, the DC voltage could be negative. It doesn't have to always be positive. It's all in reference to kind of ground, which I've, is that middle point on this scope right now. Whoops. Oh, no. So I'm going to put on here about, I don't know, it's about 12 volts of offset right now, okay? And I want you to watch something. I'm going to hit some buttons here on the oscilloscope, and uh, hopefully you can see. But it says here coupling. DC coupled or AC coupled? And when you hit the DC, I mean the AC coupled, watch what happens. Well, your signal went right back down to reference to zero. So what they do inside of an oscilloscope is they put a little coupling capacitor right on the inside. And when you turn this thing to AC coupled, it puts that capacitor in play. So it lets the AC signal pass through. But remember, capacitors block DC. So it gets rid of all the DC offset. And you may wonder, well, why would you want that? Um, well, here's why. This oscilloscope can go up to a 5 volt scale. That's the most it can do. Um, and then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gradients here. So 5 times 5, 200, I mean 25 volts is the most offset this thing can show. But then, hey, somebody says, hey, but I've noticed that some oscilloscope probes have a switch on them that will let you do 1x or 10x. That's right. You can flip the switch on the probe down there to make it 10x. And at that point, um, you would get 250 volts from here to here. But what if you're measuring a 400 volt signal that has uh, 10 volts of AC on top of it? You would never be able to see it on the oscilloscope unless you went to AC coupled, got rid of the DC, and measured everything relative to ground at that point, or zero volts. Okay, let's take a look at a real live uh, example here in a vacuum tube amplifier. This is a uh, Heathkit AA111, um, which is uh, the same as the AA30. But, anyway, it uses a 5AR4 for its rectifier, otherwise known as a GZ34. Very, very common um, tube amplifier rectifier. And I thought I would point out here to you that, um, let's look at what we've got here. We've got pins 4 and 6, which both go to the plate. Those will end up connecting to... Um, both of the two sides of the power transformer, high voltage. And then what you've got here is on pin 8, if you'll notice, it kind of has two connections to it. One connection is the cathode over here. Um, so this, is, this turns into basically two diodes at that point and gives you uh, full wave rectification. And so off of the cathode is where you will pull your high voltage from. Uh, which in, in this case could be anywhere from 3 to 4 or 450 volts um, DC that you would pull off of this cathode. And at the same time, pin 8 here also goes to this connection, um, which is tied to one side of the filament, and then pin 2 is tied to the other side of the filament. And we're going to be lighting this filament up here um, with 5 volts AC. So at any point in time on pin number 8 right here, you will have a combination of 5 volts AC feeding the filaments as well as the uh, high voltage that you're pulling off of the cathode right here um, after it's rectified. So let's take a look at that in the actual circuit. It might be a little tough to see, but um, I've got the black wire here down on pin number 2. And I've got this red connection on pin number 8 here. And I've got this other red connection here on pin number 8. And then I have... Let me zoom back out on this. I have another black lead coming off of uh, this one um, tied over here to ground. And so what, I've, what these two things tie to are these two uh, multimeters right here. One of which I'm going to show you AC on, the other I'm going to show you the DC on. Okay, so we've got the meters turned on now. And if you'll notice over here, I'm measuring volts DC, and I'm going between pin number 8 and ground. Um, I've got 358 volts DC sitting right here 
uh, coming off of this rectifier, the cathode, pin number 8 right here. And if you'll notice over here, going across pin number 2 and pin number 8 here across the heater, I've got, um, it says 4.79 volts of AC um, voltage right there. So on that exact same point, notice both the red tips here, exact same points. One of them I have 358 volts, the other one I have DC, the other one I have 5 volts of AC. Uh, let's take a look at this on the oscilloscope. And as you can see here, we've got um, yeah, 6 volts AC at that point, and you see here we're going across pins 2 and 8 there on the filament. So um, I, would, I can't show you the DC because it's uh, more voltage than, uh, than I get this little scope to display. But I think you kind of get the picture at this point. Um, both of these can exist at the same time on the uh, same location on a circuit. It just happens to be one, the DC kind of offsets the AC. There's a lot of times in tube amp schematics, uh, let me see if I can show you one. So there are times you, when you specifically want to float your AC on your DC, or in other words, have your AC signal with a DC offset. This is a great example here, if you'll remember this uh, single-ended amplifier build that I'm working on. By the way, I'm still waiting on the chassis to come back from the powder coat shop um, and then I'll finish that up but here's look at this you've got a set of windings here that's um, designed to feed 6.3 volts AC to the 6SN7 set of tubes over here and if you'll notice the center tap unlike these um, 6.3 volt windings down here that are tied to ground the center tap of this one is brought over here and if you kind of measure between here which has about 400 volts sitting on it and ground and you use this 390k and this 82k here as a voltage divider it puts you at about 75 volts right here at the center tap point so in other words what you end up with is instead of your your um, reference point for your 6.3 volts being ground your reference point is 75 volts so this thing is swinging from 75 volts up to 78.15 and then from 75 down to the um, 71.85 volts um, back and forth. So you still get the same amount of uh, AC energy being, uh, being uh, expelled there on the circuit. You just don't have it referenced to ground to zero. And you have to do that uh, because of this SRPP design here. This cathode, there is, if you look up the spec sheet on a 6SN7, there's a characteristic in there that says maximum cathode to heater voltage. Remember, in a tube, typically your, um, your cathode is um, a little um, set of wires or a little um, um, circular cylindrical thing wrapped around your heater voltage, which is typically um, some tungsten wires. And so there's a maximum voltage between those two before you would actually arch over and break down. So um, because this um, cathode here is sitting at a pretty high potential level, because this cathode doesn't go to ground at this point, it goes to the plate of this other tube here, this thing's sitting up uh, you know, um, way above ground. And so floating this um, cathode here, I mean the... Uh, the filaments up at 75 volts get you above the level that you have to worry about the delta between this cathode and that 75 volts causing that arc over. So intentionally that's uh, why that's done. If you look at this schematic here as well, you're coming off of pins 2 and 8 here of the, uh, the 5R4 or 5U4 um, and you're coming over here to this point where you would have about 400 volts um, that we're starting to rectify with this 33 microfarad. But at the same time, pins 2 and 8 here, if you'll notice, they're also tied back over here to this location right here, which feeds it with 5 volts AC uh, to heat the filaments, um, because this is a directly heated um, cathode here in this case, unlike the 6S and 7, where the cathode and the heaters are slightly separated from each other, both physically and electrically. Hope you learned something. Um, if you got questions, post them. I'll try to try to bring some clarity. But 
trying to uh, bring a little bit of insight into how you have this AC and DC sitting at the same point on a circuit at the same point in time. You can always look at it as the DC is offsetting the AC either positively or negatively from ground. So it's all about your reference point. Thanks for watching everybody.